My name is Dr. Nathan Treff. I'm the Director of Molecular Biology Research at Reproductive Medicine Associates of New Jersey, one of the largest IVF clinics in this area of the United States. We also consistently have the highest success rates in the world. We currently perform about 2,000 IVF treatment cycles, and so we have a large volume of patients that we see every year. Uh, one of the big problems with in vitro fertilization is multiple gestations. Uh, there's a lot of potential complications and it's very costly to our healthcare system. Our research focus has been to evaluate the genetics of the human embryo, particularly with respect to whether or not there are the correct number of chromosomes within the embryo. This is the leading genetic cause of miscarriage and newborn developmental delay. It's also responsible for a large majority of infertility. One of the challenges with evaluating genetics of the human embryo is that we have very little material to work with. In some cases we have a single cell or less and this really poses difficulty when you're trying to quantify nucleic acids. When I first started at RMA, we primarily focused on applications involving microarray technology. Um, one of the challenges with using microarrays is the amount of time that it takes to conduct the experiment. Real-time PCR offered an excellent solution because of its rapid nature. The speed of qPCR is really important to our research because when it's applied clinically, we have very little amount of time to obtain a result. In addition, our focus has really been on accuracy of methodologies, and we've found that quantitative real-time PCR is significantly more accurate than data you can obtain from a microarray. One of the challenges with using quantitative real-time PCR as opposed to a microarray is that the throughput is not necessarily as high. Initially, we were using the 7900 to perform quantitative real-time PCR. We evaluated a number of high-throughput instruments, including the open array, the Biomark Fluidime, uh, as well as a system from Roche. The conclusion we came to at that point was that we could still use the 7900 and perform fewer reactions but with higher quality results. Of course, more recently, the introduction of the Quant Studio 12K Flex has also offered a new opportunity to increase throughput but maintain the same quality of data. One of the challenges associated with moving towards more high throughput methodologies is that you typically have to sacrifice on data quality. And we actually observed that this was the case for a lot of the different systems we evaluated, including ones from Fluid IM and Roche. But with the Quant Studio, we, we actually were able to maintain data quality and accuracy. And now it's really opened up a lot of new applications that we can consider, not only because of data quality, but also because it's significantly reducing our cost per sample. The single most important value of the Quant Studio 12K Flex in our laboratory is really its flexibility. It really allows us to do a wide variety of experiments. We can perform gene expression profiling, microRNA analysis, genotyping, digital PCR, and we can do it in a wide variety of throughput capacities. Currently, one of the primary applications of the Quant Studio 12K Flex in our laboratory is to evaluate approximately 100 mutations in parallel. This project involves a number of different steps, one of which is to validate that each individual assay works correctly. And one of the features on the system is that we can also perform experiments using the VS7 capability and do real-time genotyping. The real-time genotyping capability really allows us to identify the most optimum endpoint for each individual assay. For this particular project, the throughput capacity of the instrument is probably the most important feature. It really puts us in a place that allows us to evaluate a large number of samples and a large number of targets within a very short amount of time. One of the applications of the instrument that we're really excited about is the digital PCR. We have a number of potential applications for digital PCR in my research and we're just now starting to initiate investigating those areas. One of the things I like about working with Life Technologies is that we've been able to collaborate and work towards the development of new technologies and platforms together. In the future, I hope that they continue to do that with other researchers and scientists as well as my own laboratory.